The Pinball Network is online. Launching. Pinball Party. From the same team that brought you Pinball Party Episode 9, comes Episode 10 with the same people, person, me. Hey, it's me, Jason. Welcome to Pinball Party Episode 10. I guess I forgot the last couple times to say adult language, etc. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so if your kids are listening and, and you don't want them to hear certain words, you know what they are. You know, do what you gotta do. Anyway, welcome back. It's actually only been a few days, but last week's came out a little later than normal, so hey, I guess almost like we didn't even miss each other. Well, I mean, you didn't miss me. I I missed you, you know? And for all those writing in, you know, the, the voicemails and the emails that I don't get to, I, I read them all. Uh, I, I, I love them. Uh, they're all great. I love most of them. <laughs> but, you know... I. Uh, all the kind words again. If I don't, if I don't read them on air or remember to email you, just because I'm busy, I I read them all. I thank you very much for your comments, uh, your questions, and your concerns. You know, whatever. Not a lot of concerns, other than that one guy who said I should change the name. Which I ah, shit. yeah, I meant to change the name to Penis, but yeah, we'll see. Maybe we'll call this episode Penis. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's not a lot of news in three days, turns out, that can happen in the pinball world. If we're talking the world, yeah, you know, things, hey, uh, here's the news of the world. Things are going to shit. All right, cool. So pinball world, not a lot has changed in three days. There's really not any stern, JJP, spooky, American pinball, pinball brothers. There's not really any announcements or big changes. I know we just got a stern of the union uh, just like two seconds ago. I haven't read it yet, but I guess aside from the, the announcements from the big, you know, manufacturers, f- for me, what I've, I guess, personally been doing pinball-wise is, a, you know, selling and trading per usual, doing my thing. I had a really interesting fucking follow-up to the last week's Figure It Out, Figure but it I'm going to actually talk about that in a couple of weeks for the, for the whole story. It's pretty interesting. There has been a couple, like, pinball-related things. Uh, just yesterday, a new Straight Down the Middle pinball review came out. The guys are tackling Halloween. I won't spoil what they give it. I suggest you go watch it. It's great. I'll review quickly here. I'll, I'll review the review. I think the audio and visual. No, let me, here we go. My overall grade is an A minus. I'll tell you why it's not an A plus. And for only one reason. Is the video and audio fantastic? Yep. Is the editing fantastic? Yep. Is the overall, you know, the charisma and the, yeah, all that, all that you expect from straight down the middle of pinball review series is great. It's out there. Go watch it. However, it's getting an A minus because Zach didn't shave his head. He put on a bald cap. And I know you did really good CG and really tried to hide it. It's, it's, it's barely noticeable for those that have watched or watched. You can't really tell it's a bald cap, but I could tell because of my discerning eye. So yeah, if you would have shaved your head, A plus. But you didn't, so A minus. Anyway, go check out the new video review of Spooky's Halloween by the Straight Down the Middle guys on the Pinball Network. All right, what else has happened in pinball? You know, I guess last time the Nudge guys were on and each of them gave a least favorite game and that favorite game, least favorite game for each of them happened to be a Raymond Davidson game and a little peek behind the curtains, he heard (laughs) and he uh, messaged us in Discord kind of like, must not react, but it was all tongue in cheek. And I will give everyone a very awesome sign of Raymond Davidson's dedication to his craft he took the objective feedback objectively and asked everyone in the tpn discord uh, kind of what makes rush's pinball code confusing or you know to the lay person for lack of a better phrase and honestly it generated a pretty active conversation and we all kind of gave our feedback some of it you know very seriously well you know seriously when it comes to pinball um, others just giving him shit and sending memes i leaned more on the meme side and just fucked around but no anyway travis had some good thoughts joel had some good thoughts uh david had some good you know it it was awesome so the message here is everyone out there who thinks that when a a code is maybe 
um, talked about as too simple, too light, too difficult. At least when it comes to Ray Day, he's taking that in and thinking, hmm, how can we improve it in the future? So the feedback is important. Uh, Objective feedback is important to all pinball designers out there. Coders, designers, uh, video assets, animation, everything. Coming from someone that, that creates things, it can sting. It, it it very much can sting when you get, uh, I should say, emotional, quote, feedback about something that's just, like, I fucking hate it. Okay, you know, it, okay. It's, it's Regardless of opinions on something, quote, art-ish, right? Spooky, you name it, anyone. Kudos out there to anyone who's actually got the balls to create something and put it out there. It takes a lot of guts, in my opinion, to say, here's my thing. Maybe you enjoy it. Maybe you don't. You know who's got it easy? No offense. Is Elwin. So everyone loves it. So for him, make a new shit. Great. Here's more praise. Great. Here's more praise. That's a pretty easy gig. Now, seeing his kind of craft, I'm just, again, I'm just assuming he's hard enough on himself to make things that great over and over. And that's true for anyone creating something out there. So no matter what someone else's opinion is, my opinion is of if you've done something and we might think it's a lower grade or whatever, we might kind of bullshit. Kudos to you again for actually having the balls or the guts to do it. Long winded, I guess, answer again of saying, hey, Ray Day's listening about the, the rush code and I think it can only improve from here. Again, would you take the time to learn it? I think, in my opinion, it's great. And wow, is it one of the best shooters out there? Okay, uh, enough rush. I've been I've been touting it too much lately and, and whatever. No more rush talk. Sorry. Done. Uh, what else has been going on? Since I'm, I'm kind of just digging deep here, um, let me check in, I guess, with me uh, again, uh, I don't know, roughly about a half hour ago. Hey, Jason, thanks for checking in. Uh, we're just in the middle of a walk again with Mabel, as we do. No podcasts, well, pinball podcasts to listen to, so I guess that's why you're, you're making one. That's your job. Do your job. Uh, but uh, Mabel just had herself a nice bite of deer shit. Um, I'll have you know, uh, for those wondering, no, she doesn't just eat all kinds of shit. She doesn't eat dog poo, cat poo, human shit that I know of. Uh, however, she loves herself a nice bite of juicy black BB sized deer shit. Um, and that's disgusting. So thanks Mabel. Um, let's keep going. But, uh, that's all I got. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, she took a poop already. So, you know, we can turn around, but yeah, yeah anyway, cool. Thanks for checking in i guess this is weird huh all right bye all right pointless great got that out of the way forgive me again this is not a big world crashing news there's just nothing recently we're still waiting on bond i urge you to go on Pinside and see what the number one currently rated game is that is of as of today tuesday november 1st at roughly 10 a.m i'll pause here or you pause you pause me Go look if you don't want to be spoiled, because I'm about to spoil this big fucking news. Guess what's number one? But it's interesting. So, pause. There you go. There's your pause. The number one currently rated game on Pinside is Alien. Yep. The Pinball Brothers Alien. And you might think, oh, this is just, okay, all the reviews are out now for the LE model, so there's enough to put it. It always goes on number one. Yeah. I mean, remember, Turtles was number one at, at one point. And that game's not number one, in my opinion. Theme number one, for sure. But uh, anyway, this game is currently rated number one. Knocked Godzilla off. Warranted? Eh, you know, if I'm a betting man, I don't see aliens staying on here for very long at number one. But I'm not saying that as a lack of uh, quality. Here's my real world experience with Alien. Aside from playing it a couple times, and I played it very quickly, and it was, a, you know, I walked away like, oh, this is kind of cool, the theme integration. Oh, wow, like, it's a, this is a mood game. I just haven't had enough time to give any sort of objective opinion, even subjective opinion. So I don't have a review, even of first impressions. But every single person I've talked to who's owned it, every single one, including the ones for sale around me on the market, their only complaint is they don't have the LE. It's if they have the standard. They like it so much that they wish they had the LE. The two for sale around me, same reason. The person I was uh, texting with yesterday, hey, Zach, <laughs> uh, he was saying, I think I want the LE. It's currently his favorite game, Alien. I've heard it from multiple people. No joke. 
And we've even seen it on when TPN, if it was after dark or after hours or whatever that midnight special is they do, which is pretty great. Hey, turn it into a podcast. Uh, they did a top five of each person's game. And of course, Godzilla was on there quite a bit. There was Deadpool, you know, famous games you'd think, okay, yeah, those are great games. Alien made the list as well. So my point is this, if there is a point, I don't fuck points, right? Pinside, Alien is number one right now. I don't think it's complete bullshit. I am tempted to get one in the home to play because even around me again, you know, like Tilt, they don't have it. Uh, District 82 probably has it, but they're open like once a year for people that aren't uh, in tournaments. <laughs> Nothing against them. District 82 is incredible, but I have nowhere to play that game around me. And here's a <laughs> here's a really funny value proposition for you. My, my two games that I'm currently thinking of due to, you know, the pinball intervention nudge guys had with me last week of, hey, stop with all these new sterns. Get something else in there to, to mix it up. Good homework. Uh, thanks, Doc. Uh, I guess I mean that in a pun. Uh, my two possible games right now that I'm toying around with getting in the home to get some non-stern time on are TNA the original run, or Alien. And now let's take, just to really make this point kind of wow, uh, let's take the value of those two games and the cost. And I'm going to take what you could buy right now. So TNA 2.0 at $9,500, lol, or a used Alien Standard, which you can get faster than a new one, at about $8,500. Seems to be the price you can get one at. 8500 for Alien, which is like, you know, when Wizard of Oz came out and you're like, whoa, there is a lot of new expensive shit in this game. That's what Alien's like. Holy shit. They're not fucking around. That's Alien for 8500 It's a wide body, so you know, take it or leave it, you know, for, for those that, that have a strong opinions. I, I'm kind of middling on it, but if you want to, let's be super objective. Wide body, there's literally more pinball. So just point one, <laughs> I'm stretching here. Uh, a wide body, you literally get more bang for your buck than TNA, and TNA is actually smaller than standard. So <laughs> you get my point, right? You literally get a bigger game for the money. Okay, that's 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 nonsense. But now let's look at the actual game. All right, take a second and think about the fact that Alien, one of the most stuffed and feature-rich pinball machines of the last 10 years, was just remade because it is kind of that great, is $1,000 cheaper than TNA. Again, TNA is a great game. It, nothing. This is just all the price talking, okay? Scott, TNA, fucking A, great game. But, I mean, if, if you're telling someone not in pinball, hey, take a look at these two games. Which one do you think costs significantly more money? Oh, they will instantly say Alien. Instantly. They'll be like, oh, that's cost 5000 more than that than that other one. Okay, there's just the value of that. So, for me, I'm kind of convincing myself, should I get an Alien? I guess? Whoa. I, I don't... To, to be continued. But Alien is currently number one. I peg it'll move down to like the mid-teens, let's say, over time. But eh, anyway, for those out there, maybe it'll help move some of those aliens. And for those who haven't tried it, you should try it. Try it with the lights off. Get the sound up. I bet you will walk away at least with, whoa, that's pretty cool. And you may walk away with, holy shit, I gotta get one of those. Before we check in with the listeners, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the Buffalo Pinball guys. I know they're not, you know, technically on TPN or anything, but those are consistently some of the best podcasts, streams, reviews, you name it. They, they're they they're up there. Um, I, you know, selfishly wish they did a podcast more than once a month because I love it. I love the candor. I think yeah, I align with a lot of what they're saying a lot of time. Not that that means that they're the best, but, I, you know, we all have our have our, our niche, our, our style. But uh, a million shout outs to the Buffalo Pinball guys. Go check them out. Check them out on Twitch. Check out their podcast, Bro, Do You Even Talk Pinball? Check out their YouTube videos, their tutorials, their reviews. They have a lot of content. I, I personally don't think it should go unnoticed. It's fantastic. And, um, you know, a minor goal of mine is to get one or both of them on the party to just, you know, have a good time. Anyway, open invitation. Buffalo Pinball, guys. Let's talk. Let's hang out. That'd be awesome. I know you're busy, but would love to have you on. 
All right, let's check in with the listeners, starting with someone who called in. For those who don't know, we have a voicemail line. You can call in, get yourself heard on the air, give me some shit, tell me a joke, uh, you know, whatever you want to do. I don't, you know, just you could just breathe for a couple minutes, and that that would suck. But I guess you would put me through. You would literally waste a couple minutes of my time of me listening to you breathe. But that number is two six two five two eight six six two five. Again, call into the pinball party, leave a voicemail at 262-528-6625. Hey, I'd like to talk about uh, medieval madness with the castles. And they, they bounce and they explode and, and you can get the Earl and the Duke and they, they get all the medieval madness. What the fuck? Perfect. Yes, please call in, send voicemails, just like that. Really important. Helps the world go round. Helps save children's lives. Moving on to people that aren't insane. We got a message from Brad in Rochester, New York. It says, hello from Rochester. I very much enjoyed your podcast and music. I randomly came across this song today, and looking it up, I was surprised to know it's quite old, so maybe you've heard it already. Anyway, not to pigeonhole your music style or anything, but remind me of some of the stuff I've heard on your podcast and thought it was really well-written and funny. Tis the season, so I attached it. I wish you all the best going forward in all your future endeavors, whatever they may be. More so writing to say thanks for a great pinball content. I really appreciate it, Brad. For context, what he sent in was a Jonathan Colton song, called Re Your Brains, like regarding your brains. Jonathan Colton, I was very well aware of Jonathan Colton before he emailed in. And man, if there is some chance he's out there listening, dude, your stuff is fantastic. Uh, he's, for, for those who don't know, he's a very avid songwriter. And uh, here's how avid. If you heard of the video game Portal, you know the song's still alive? Yeah, he made that. It's incredible. But he also did this thing called Thing a Week, where every week he challenged himself to write and record a song for 52 weeks. And I mean, you know, that takes a lot. I, I, I can say that when you do flex that muscle of songwriting, it does get easier over time. But but do not take away from someone writing 52 songs in a year. And some of them are super top notch. My favorite from from the whole kit and caboodle. It's actually called Shop Vac. It's very, and I, and I think he intended it this way. It's very Fountains of Wayne ish. It's called Shop Vac. Here, I'll put in a little sample. Upstairs with the TV, you can cry and I probably won't hear you because it's loud with the shop back on. Man, I, I sorry, I can't help but sing along. That song is fucking great. If anyone knows Jonathan Colton, please somehow pass him the word that the pinball party's favorite song of his is Shop Vac. Anyway, anyone out there, you could do a lot worse than listening to Jonathan Colton's music, either from the Portal song to a lot of his other songs. Great shit. Anyway, tangent aside. Another message from someone at Expo. Josh says, was just listening to your recent episode and heard the kind words you said about the TX sector I brought to Expo. That really made my day. Just wanted to share. Yeah, so for everyone else, he sent a picture of him and Elwin actually by his TX sector that Doc Monday was talking about last week. But awesome picture. Glad you liked the show. Thanks for writing in. We'll just top it off with one more. Got a few here, but uh, keep it somewhat short today. Uh, this is from a Mike from, I'm assuming, Minneapolis. Been listening to the show and really been enjoying it. The figure it out stuff is hilarious. I may have missed it, but you have mentioned Tilt a few times in episode nine. Are you talking about Tilt in Minneapolis? I play a league there and it's my favorite place to flip. Thanks for the sweet content and Neon Dale stuff is great too. Big Triple Drain fan as well. Hey, take care, dude. Yeah, quick side shout out to Triple Drain Podcast on the Pinball Network. Fantastic. But to I, I read this I read this email to answer his question publicly. Yes, I am referencing Tilt Pinball in Minneapolis. It's a great bar and pinball place, but this is one of those places where it's pinball first, bar second. Loaded with pinball games, oftentimes LEs, premiums as well. They their games are almost always perfectly working. They rotate as needed, but they always have the favorites in there. Anyways. Tilt Pinball in Minneapolis. If you're in the area, go check them out. They're fantastic. Thank you to everyone else who wrote in. We'll get to your email some other time. But let's stop hearing from me. I have 
a guest who's been on here in the past. Now, before you get excited, I caution you to not get excited. Who is this guest? Well, his name is Meff, M-E-F-F. This is actually an AI robot that I have. I keep in my closet because Jesus, he's a he's a wild card. Meph is a robot that I bought, for those who aren't aware. The final round pinball podcast gave the pinball party a shout out uh, a couple months ago. It generated such an influx of listeners that, of course, as I monetized my podcast, I became a millionaire overnight, yada, 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 yada. The story is I bought this pinball robot and I asked them to make it as a cross between the two personalities of the hosts of the final round. So Jeff and Marty's name became Meph. That's what I named the robot, and, and Meph sometimes joins me on the show. He's a complete fuck, but his personality was upgraded recently. When I initially got him, you know, he was kind of just like, you know, he didn't have a lot to say, but uh, and he malfunctioned a little bit. But I got him an upgrade chip, so I wanted to check back in with him, see how he's doing, see if he's, you know, any smarter. So I guess cautiously, welcome back to the show, Meph. Hello, Jason. Thanks for having me. Hey, you bet. And good to hear you actually have some manners. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks, mate. Oh, that's that's good to hear. Playing any any pinball recently or anything? Or are you just stuck in my fucking closet? Ha ha ha, not funny. All right, enough giving you shit, right? And fucking around a little bit, but... Eat shit. Hey, you know, <laughs> I, I, I want you to tell the people, you, you, you feel a little different, right? Right. I mean, I, I could tell you that, well, what really happened is you are AI, you're fake, bro. I, I got a chip implanted in you, and that's why you feel somewhat different. But I guess, how do you feel? This word feel that you say, I believe I feel like I understand more things, but at the same time more intensely. Right. And from my understanding, this chip has upgraded you to essentially like a 17-year-old right. um, level of thinking, which is much better than that. It seemed like you were a two-year-old last time. But So what's been on your mind as like a 17-year-old, I guess, quote, male robot? I want to bank chicks. Whoa, dude. <laughs> you can't say that. Why not? Because you're going to get us canceled. What the fuck is canceled, bro? Well, canceled is what happens now when, uh, geez, how do you explain? Okay. You know how like the communication world is now essentially flat. Not, not the earth is flat. The earth is a sphere, by the way. Confirmed. But the, the, the sociology term of the world is flat, meaning you can contact anyone in the world at any time. Right. Faster than I guess technically you should. You know, while they say statistically roughly about 150 people is the correct size or the maximum size of a society, beyond that, they lose their ability to function effectively in like social relationships. But now we live in a world where like seven to eight billion people are all connected at once. So, as you can imagine, there are a lot of bad side effects. One of the side effects is groups of people who try to do from a place of good, stop people's career or livelihood based on a way they've chosen to interpret a certain word. That's fucked up. Even a word like chick. Yes, even a word like chick. But I didn't mean anything derogatory or negative. No, I know what you meant. You meant as a 17-year-old boy with a strong sexual desire, the attraction to the opposite sex, and used a slang term you heard along the way. Ah, however, that's not what you meant. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, Because I'm is. telling you what you meant. Wait. I'm sorry. Wait. I'm sorry. Fuck I'm sorry. Hey, I will speak louder and louder hey, hey, until hey, I'm hey, heard and you hey, are not. Hey, 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 wait. Essentially, I don't want to hear what you have to say. Because hey, any hey, sort of challenge wait. my personal opinion or belief Kangaroo. makes me think inwards and I don't want to because I'm hey, hey, angry hey, hey. at the world as a side effect Hockey. of this society. Wait. So instead, I will use wait. my readily Comedy. available interconnectedness hey, 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 handed hey, hey. to me on a silver plate. To gather a world's army fueled hey, 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 by hey. confirmation bias to shut hey, you hey, down. Hey, hey, hey. Get canceled. Just got yourself shut down, guy. That could be a world's first. Shutting down slash canceling an AI robot. Feels pretty good. A pioneer in this field. Even AI can get canceled. No one can hide. The cancelers. Eh, whatever. Maybe that should be uh, a superhero. Do you remember... <laughs> Speaking of getting canceled, anyone out there remember the ambiguously gay duo from Saturday Night Live? <laughs> that could not air today. Although, it was funny. It was timelessly funny and came from a place of humor first. Not knocking anyone's sexual preference, but anyway, I should shut up before I legit get canceled. Let's review a pinball machine. This week, it's AMC's Stern's 
The Walking Dead. Now, one thing I'm going to do this week, I should say different, but not really different. We're going to do the same categories. But each time we talk about a category, I'm going to say why you should take this category and my opinion with a grain of salt. All sorts of reviews can be interpreted very different many ways. Subjective, objective, yada, yada, yada. Well, spoiler, everything is subjective if it comes from a human, right? But I think in pinball, it's important to be responsible with reviews. Why? Because I think sometimes they indirectly affect the market. Whether it's Straight Down the Middle, Buffalo Pinball, myself, anyone on YouTube, Carrie Hardy, you name it. When it's something this expensive... Certain things can move the needle, and I think it's responsible to be uh, responsible with with what you're saying. Now, another type of game review that's very popular is video games, right? But those are not really a five to fifteen thousand dollar thing. They're still expensive, mind you, with the console and everything you have to get or PC, you name it. But there's it's so popular, it's so easy to sell, trade, and video games, and not really lose a lot of money comparatively. So. One thing I want to do this week is each category say why really it's up to you. And I encourage everyone to play games out there. And I know you can't. Coming from the horse's mouth, I can't always play games. So my problem is I buy too many and sell and trade and uh, try not to lose. It's a, It can be a hassle. It takes a lot of energy and sometimes I don't have it. However, that's what's different this week. Let's get right into theme. First and foremost, here's a big reason why it's a, you know, take with a grain of salt. What does theme really mean to everyone out there? Something like The Walking Dead, for example. If you put this theme eh, six, seven years ago when it was all over all the time, you might say this theme is a 10, right? Because that's all you see, that's all you hear. It's zombies, yeah, everyone loves it. And today, with it being much lower on the people's radar, I guess you could maybe say it's a 2, right? I don't know. Or... Someone could say, I love zombies. Anything zombies is a 10 for me. Well, then that game would be a 10. Or someone who says, I have kids and they're scared of this theme. That could be a zero. So theme, really, on this one specifically, it's it's so hard to put a number on it. So I think we're going to disregard theme number this week and just give a kind of like, well, in pop culture, how prevalent is it? You know, similar to Iron Man, which everyone knows. I'd say Walking Dead is about fairly... I guess I'm going to, I mean, use a number, but it's not going to be in the calculation. I would say roughly a six. It's slightly above average in the zeitgeist of, you know, popularity out there. People know it, but it's polarizing, but people might not like zombies, but they might have kids, yada, yada, yada. So theme, again, why this is uh, something you should be very wary of my opinion on. I'm going to say it's slightly above average. All right. Gameplay. First. Why is this something you should take with a grain of salt? Well, maybe I like games that are very, very easy to shoot. You know, like uh, the ramps are super easy every time you hit it. Let's say something like a Star Trek Pro or Premium, Stern Star Trek. Or let's say I like really tough games with like a lot of clunky shots, I should say. Maybe clunky is the right word. Something like, although it's great, Deadpool or maybe Mando or some of the t- or, or Houdini. The shots are really tight. Maybe I like that. Maybe I like a, a sniper-type shooter. Sometimes people say Jurassic Park. I disagree. I think that's a really smooth shooter. So it depends on what type of game someone likes. The type of game you like has a very large influence on what someone might say with gameplay. You say, well, of course, Jason, shut the hell up. That's obvious. But Walking Dead is kind of a mix of everything. It's a hard shooter in the sense that like some of the geometry makes straight down the middle things happen quite a bit, not necessarily the pop bumpers. I'll tell you the problem there. If people are like, oh, it's, it's such a problem. It's a fault in the physics of the game. It's not. It just takes very precise leveling. I've, I've had it enough to know if you level it right, you will not have straight down the middle stuff uh, for those who know what I'm talking about. In the poppers in the upper right, it comes down and it'll hit a post and it'll guide to your left flipper. Then you know it's set up correctly. So that's really not an issue. Another strange point about The Walking Dead is the Pro has super, super smooth ramps. Easy to hit, in my opinion. Now, the Premium, I don't think it's really that big of a difference. The right ramp is still smooth as hell. It's like this very flat thing, like you hit it, and it kind of just makes it every time. The left one is, is a little harder, kind of, but I think it's blown out of proportion a lot online that say that it's it's drastically worse than the Pro. I don't think so, because the first time I've played A Walking Dead, the one that sold me on it, was actually uh, an LE, 
pretty sure it was an LE. Could have been a premium with powder coat, but who knows? It was at Tilt Pinball, Minneapolis. Hey, oh. But I remember playing it after hearing all the positive reviews, and I'm like, whatever, it's Walking Dead. I don't really care. And I played it, and I was blown away. Part of it was the shots. I thought all the shots were very makeable, very smooth. But then there's that other camp that thinks it's very hard. It's, it's oh, it's so unfair. The magnets, eh, kind of depends. But I think Walking Dead sits in that in-between where it's both. It depends uh, how you set it up, one or two. It depends how you're coming into it, what kind of mindset. So for me, I think the gameplay is a 10. I really do. It, it, it hits both camps. It's smooth, yet it's brutal. Rules, we'll get into a second, but it, it hits everything. It really does. All right, so rules. Why should this number not matter? Why should this, you know, area of judging not matter? Again, what type of rules do you like? Some people like Pac-Man. I just want to get the little bits, and then I want to get the super pellets, and I want to eat the ghosts, and I want to do that, you know, what is it, 99 times? I, I, I don't, Forgive me, the old video games, I forget how when you get to the kill screen, what it may be, Donkey Kong, etc., you want to do it over and over and over and over. Or like a couple weeks ago, talking about Iron Man. The rules are very, very simple, but it's an adrenaline rush. Or you might be on the other side. You might be a Lord of the Rings guy. You might be a Wizard of Oz, a Simpsons pinball party. Uh, honestly, Godzilla, something with really in-depth code where there's tons to do, sometimes almost overwhelming. Oh my God, what do you do? So this is coming from someone who actually likes a little bit of mix of both. Honestly, I, I don't really like the in-between, frankly, which is, which is kind of strange now that I say it out loud. I, I really love Lord of the Rings. It is my favorite game that's it's actually created, Lord of the Rings. And on the other side of the coin, I love Iron Man, Black Knight, Tron. Really simple. Sometimes I just want a five-minute game, and that's it. Well, guess what? I think Walking Dead is a 10 because it does both. You can either you know, get all the multi-kills, go for the horde mode, you can go for the modes, the, the CDC, you can shoot the drop targets on the left, you can do all that, or you can just walk up and say, I want to get well walker multi-ball, I want to get prison multi-ball and just see how far I can get, how many multi-balls can I get, I just want to hit the uh, fish tank right ramp over and over, I want to get those three little, you can kind of pick and choose, you don't have to play it really in depth, but it can get as in depth as something like Lord of the Rings, where you have the number of zombies you're going to kill, the different modes, the multi kill weapons, the couple wizard modes, you name it. It's all in there. If you want to call it a super deep game, it is. If you also want to call it a really simple game that's brutal, fast, and simple, it is. I agree with those out there that think it's one of the best codes in pinball, period. I do. It's a 10. Easy. And I think either the pro or the premium. I'll, you know, I talked about it a little bit ago, but I lean towards the the premium LE um, easily every time. Nine out of ten times, I would rather play that than the Pro. Uh, I'll talk about it more in a second. But visuals uh, for those out there, I lump in visuals with kind of just anything you can see: lights, playfield art, you name it. Well, here we go again. Why does this category not matter? <laughs> uh, subjectively, objectively, what I'm out to give it. Well, what if my favorite color is red? Ooh, and, and a beige. This game's going to be way up there. Or what if I'm someone who likes neon? Uh, well, yeah, I do. <laughs> neon Dale, right? Time and time again, back my head on that uh, or I like a lot of bright greens, bright reds. Uh, I like a, you know, a TNA with all these flashy colors. Or a Godzilla, super bright. Looks great whether you're in the dark or whether you're in the light. Or I know I go back to Lord of the Rings a lot, but it's, it's always on my mind. Honestly, you're going to hear that from podcast one to the end of I Stop. It's the game that kind of sold me on pinball and it continues to be. Uh, anyway, what if I'm someone that likes that Lord of the Rings really subtle um, incandescent glow of the lamps, which I prefer on that? OK, this game might be closer to a nine or ten anyway, because it's got that kind of orangish beige look. My visuals don't matter. Or again, what if I'm a, a huge zombie fan? Then I'm going to say it's a 10. And everyone's like, you're wrong. Well, yeah, but I like zombies. It's hard to put objective, especially in a visual. Something that pleases me doesn't please you. But try as I may to convince you that my opinion does not matter on visuals. I will give it my kind of, uh, I guess, personal preference, right? I prefer the LE and premium visuals every day over the pro. The back glass, take it or leave it, they're all just fine. And I never look at it when I'm playing anyways. Uh, who really does? No one. Same with the topper. I'm not looking at it while I'm playing. It's the play field, it's the lights, it's the toys that draw you in. 
the thing that drew me in first when I played the Ellie version was, yes, the, the smooth shots, but it was the lighting. The multicolor lighting that would, you know, set mood for shots or set mood for modes. And I was heartbroken when I got a pro and realized, oh, the pro just has white lights. And it's not like Iron Maiden, where Iron Maiden has white and red lights in the premium, but it's not coded to say, well, it is to say, you know, white or red in certain shots, a fear of the dark. But the pro, you can just switch those to red lights as well, and it will do the same thing. Unlike, you know, Metallica, which has the, uh, you know, the multicolor lighting you can put in the pro to make it look like a premium. That's a, a crazy mod that's not as simple as you think, and you can't even find really the chips out there anymore. Walking Dead is like that, where you can't just switch a couple red to make it look. You can statically, which I did in my pro. We can put some reds down by the slings, etc., to kind of bring out that vibe. But the premium has it coded in to know when to use red and white. And I'm talking about the GI to set the mood of modes and shots. I honestly think that is a huge boon to that game. Then you have the multicolor, or excuse me, the RGB inserts on the premium and LE. I, I think it's that's a take it or leave it for me. It really is, because you can, you know, change out the LEDs on a pro to, you know, a lot of people, including myself, will change the drop targets to different colors, like red for first aid or green for food, you know, those kind of things. Or the zombie colors on the play field, you'll change to green eh, for whatever. But you can't change the way the lighting is coded in a pro. So me, more than anything, lighting is a huge mood setter in a game and a huge visual. So for me, other people may not care. That is a huge thing. I'm going to honestly say the pro is not in this category how i review visuals the play field i guess i get the hate if someone's really looking for like a mona lisa art every time i'm just looking for what 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 fits the theme does this kind of moody almost gross kind of zombie like simple beige yeah it fits the theme i'm not looking for some cartoonish zombie to be like fuck you i'm a zombie you know just hey yeah it looks like a walking dead thing so that's fine so if I'm if I'm rating the premium LE with the lighting, which I think is one of the hugest parts of this game, I'm going to give it an 8. I'm not going to say this score when I um I'm not going to use this score when I tallied up, but the pro I would give like a 5. Yeah, I think the lighting is a huge deal. Audio. Oh, guess what? I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't care what I say. This again, Walking Dead, a special type of game that has many reasons why you shouldn't care what I think of the audio. One, well, what is someone like myself who's into audio quite a bit, music and fidelity and, you know, you name it, uh, I really care about audio. And I think it, you know, it's a very important piece of, of any sort of artistic medium. But Walking Dead has one of the most infamous Cleland codes out there. People who don't know, who are new to the hobby, what's a Cleland code? Well, let me tell you. The sound in a game... Uh, up until, I guess still in Spike 2, you can use something called Pinball Browser to edit sounds in a game quite easily to a certain extent and put it back in the game and all the rules and everything stays the same, but some of the audio can be changed. A Cleland code is someone on Pinside with that name, Cleland, that is popular for making alternate sound mixes in games. And Walking Dead is kind of his crowning achievement of, whoa, you transformed this game into something that was like, Ugh, it's fine to like, whoa, that's what I'm talking about. And I'm going to be straight with you. I've never, ever heard the original sound. I've only heard the Cleland mod. It's that popular out there. It's that much of a crucial. You need it. You got to have it. It's like I can't even review the original code. I'd have to Google it and be like, oh, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. I don't. I've only heard the Cleland mod. You know, you could review it on the original sound, which I just can't do because I've never heard it. I'm going to review on the Cleland mod and I'm going to think, all right, how's this? How's the, uh, the theme song? Well, it gets repetitive, but the only reason it gets repetitive is because it's one of those games that you want to start over and over and over and play over and over and over, which is a testament to how good it is. So I think you could put any theme song in there. You could put the John Williams opening uh, theme song to Star Wars, technically Luke's theme, right? Or the Imperial March. Everyone would be like, that's a 10 out of 10 song. Yeah, well, when you hear it 50 times a day because you love the game, you're like, fuck that song, right? So that's not really uh, a, a good indication of a score because it's a great game, so it's repetitive? No. Uh, the sound effects when you kill a zombie. You've probably heard that sound many, many, many times. But guess what? It fits. It To me, here's, here's, here's the things that stand out to me in that game, very subtly. The sound of, like, hitting a fence when you hit the prison. 
I don't know why, but I'm like, oh, that, that's cool. That, that's nice. It's a little thing. It makes you feel like a kinetic that isn't there. Like you're hitting it and like, oh, I'm hitting a fence. You're not. An opto is sensing a ball go through there and hit a bash toy. But it sounds like you're, you're hitting a fence. And then you get the art blades on the side with the fence at all. Oh, mm, it ties together. Meh. A great pinball machine. So even though there's many reasons to not pay attention to what I say on the audio, I will try my best to give it a score of what I think. And I think a lot of people kind of do think with the Cleland code. It's a solid eight. The original? Can't say. I'll guess. It's a five? I don't know. Who cares? It's an eight. The thing that matters the most, I guess, to me, is the last, you know, I guess, category, which I don't even have in the score. So I guess let's, let's add up the actual score, and then we'll get to the last kind of category. We get ourselves a 90%. Again, I didn't use the theme as part of this equation. I just used the four scores with numbers because the theme is so subjective. It's just, again, <laughs> I don't know how you review theme. It's like saying, well, I like Mario better than Halo. So Mario is a 10 and Halo is a 1 when many people think the opposite. So we got a, a 90. How does this match up with, I said, my last category? And the last category is just my personal opinion of the game regardless of numbers. No matter what, this is an A game to me, period. Uh, if in my order of premium versus pro, because I think there is a difference, I'm going to go on my little rant here again. I think the premium LE is an A slash A plus game theme aside, because again, whatever to me, it's fine. But I think the lighting is crucial. The Walker bombs are crucial. The magnet in front of the well walker, take it or leave it, but I don't mind it. The spinner on the uh, on the right hand, I forget what it's even called, uh, Woodbury shot. It's awesome. Not needed, but it's great. The the one thing, the crossbow, is like, nah, I don't need it. In fact, pff, whatever. It's like uh, you, you do it in Star Trek Next Generation plenty of times, shooting the, the, the cannons. Yeah, you did it once, you did it a thousand times. No thanks. In Walking Dead, it's a little less frequent, but eh, whatever. I just think, like Metallica, the lighting makes such a difference. Such, such, such a difference that I think that's the A-plus A, a plus game. Now, here's the... Elephant in the room mentioned a little earlier, the bicycle girl ramp. Oh no, but that's, it's so much worse on the pro or on the premium and the LE. Some games, sure. Just like some games I've played what, that are routed to hell shoot way smoother than a home use only game or a new inbox game. It's just, it's, it's subtle things. Uh, the first one I played, I never, never once would have thought that the left bicycle girl ramp was, was a thing. I was like, oh, this works every time. Oh, it's cool. It's a bash toy. Eh, it lifts up. I don't really care. Take it or leave it, but it's kind of neat. However, on the Pro, yes, you're consistently always getting this nice butter smooth ramp. I'll give anyone that. You are always going to most likely get that. It's just a better angle. There's no weird little flap thing, the bicycle girl, girl ramp. But if you take the bicycle girl, girl ramp out of the equation, which you could literally do and just put a Pro ramp on the Premium or Ellie, there's the perfect game. Um, but the lighting is so big that I would put uh, the pro at, yeah, I'd put it at a 90, an A-. minus. It, it's almost great, but the thing that holds it somewhat back is some of the lighting. I, I really hope that they reuse that layout, and people have said this before, and they, uh, keep the same theme. I don't care. Cool. Just make a pro meum version of it. Make a, you know, a total light show for the pro. Uh, buy it instantly. But the, the magnet in front of the well walker is kind of a, it can be a pro, it can be a con, it kind of slows the game down here or there once in a while, which sometimes is, is somewhat needed. And I'll tell you, something that's really, I guess, I don't know, odd to me, that I find satisfying is the clunk shot of hitting the well walker. Clunk. It's this, again, a kinetic feeling that comes from the sound and what you see at the same time. It's this overly large fat zombie that you hit and kind of i mean it slowly moves back it's a toy when you expect bash toys to kind of like hit them and jiggle fast that thing not only is kind of slow but it has a sound that shows this is a heavy weight item getting clunk moved back and forth and you add a magnet in there and it just i don't know it's another small satisfying thing at least to me so my overall opinions on the walking dead premium le version a a plus it depends on the day i'm going to give it one of those two scores the pro and a minus, which lines up with the 90% that I gave it. Again, the very last category of my personal opinion doesn't matter. You might hate the game. You might think it's an A plus on a pro all day, every day. 
And But you should use that to influence your buying and selling decision. Well, maybe not selling. <laughs> selling decision should be, you know, there's a market that's going to kind of dictate your price. But in the, in the buying side, whatever you like more is the one you should get. And it's the one you should play. You don't have to defend it to anyone. You don't have to defend why you like it. If it should be number uh, one on pin side, which Walking Dead probably should be up there quite a bit, uh, or not. Pin side are just numbers, dude. It's just numbers. Reviews, they're just numbers, man. But I think it's responsible to be responsible because it's such a large cost. And sometimes there can be influence reviews on the market and what people think. So there you go. My review of The Walking Dead. Well, there's the show, everyone. Lots of my opinions this time. Ugh. God damn. Need some other people's opinions next time. Thanks for joining me talking about news that was kind of more just, you know, entertainment news in the world of pinball. Again, check out the news straight down the middle. A Halloween review. Check out Buffalo Pinball. Check out their streams. Check out their podcast. It's awesome. Check out Triple Drain podcast. Ah, also... Check out Final Round, which I think is going to drop tomorrow or the next day. Meth will be pleased. Thanks to the listeners that called in. Thanks for the listeners that wrote in. You can write in at pinballpartypodcast at gmail.com. The phone number to leave a voicemail is in the show notes. And yeah, next time we're going to review another game. Probably add a new segment or two I'm pretty excited about. Won't give you any hints, but more to come. It's been a pleasure. Hopefully it's been a pleasure for you. Time to go make some more music. And we'll talk to you later. This has been Jason with the Pinball Party. Party.